So in part A, we have a block, and we have a spring, and then it's we need to find how much the spring has been compressed. So it has a mass m, there's a spring constant k. So all we have to do is just to balance out the forces. So there's a gravitational force, and then there's the outward force from the spring kx. So x is the amount of compression from the spring. So if you can imagine, if the spring was originally this long, this distance here, that uh, this compression here is equal to x. So by balancing out the forces, we see that x is equal to mg over k. So this is the answer to part A. This is really simple. So for part B, this entire setup is going to get flipped horizontally, and then it's going to oscillate back and forth. So it's now compressed. So the spring now is going to push this block outwards. So you can imagine afterwards, it's going to get pushed out to somewhere over here. And we want to find how much it will be pushed out. So if I take this to be the original length of the spring, so if there's no compression or stretching, this is the original length of the spring. So by definition, this will be x. Now I want to find this distance, y. So how much it's going to get stretched. <coughs> so we can, normally if this is a simple harmonic motion, this is just going to oscillate back and forth an infinite number of times. So y is just going to be equal to x. But now we have, uh, we have friction, and there's a friction coefficient of friction of one eighth. So you can imagine y is going to be smaller than x because some of the energy is going to be lost to friction. So the way we find y is that we use uh, uh, energy. So the amount of energy we had in the system is equal to one half over k square, and that is going to be the eventual potential energy we're going to have left plus the amount of energy lost to uh, friction. That is just equal to force divided, uh, multiplied by distance. So work is equal to force multiplied by distance. And the force, the friction, is equal to mg. So this is the normal force times the frictional coefficient and then multiplied by the distance traveled. So this is the amount of energy lost to friction. It's gonna get converted into heat. So all we have to do now is to solve this equation and to find y. So I'm just going to factorize this. So I'm just dumping everything to the left-hand side. And then we can get rid of this, because in this diagram, by definition, x and y are both positive. So this is not a division by 0, so I can just take it away. And I'm going to dump these constants to the other side. So 2mg mu divided by k. So we see that y is actually equal to x minus 2 mg mu over k. And then we call that in our original question, x is equal to mg over k, mu is equal to 1 8th, so this becomes mg over 4k. So our final answer is equal to mg over 3, no, 3 over 4k. Okay. So this is our final answer. So this is the answer to part B. Now for part C, it asks you uh, how many times the system is going to oscillate back and forth. So uh, at first glance, if you take a look at this answer, it seems like it's going to oscillate back and forth forever. So it seems like each successive answer, uh, so like each successive uh, distance or stretch or uh, so stretch or compression, is just going to be three fourths times the uh, the previous answer. So it's like a geometric sequence, and it's just going to get slower and uh, smaller and smaller, but never quite reaching zero. So you might, your first gut instinct might be to say it's going to oscillate back and forth an infinite number of times. But then actually, this question is uh, slightly more subtle, because if you take a look at this result that we have, we see that it is actually not a geometric sequence. It's actually an arithmetic sequence. So for any given y and x, each subsequent compression or stretch is going to get decreased by this factor. So you see, this is an arithmetic sequence, it is not a geometric sequence. So it's not going to oscillate back and forth an infinite number of times. So it's just going to keep minusing. So this is an arithmetic sequence. So this is why I derived this result first before getting to this, because this gives you the false impression that it's going to be a geometric sequence. It's going to 
tend towards zero but never quite getting there and that's why it's going to oscillate back and forth infinite number of times but it's a non-infinite number of times it's actually finite so if you go back to the original question uh, x is equal to mg divided by k and then each successive uh, oscillation the stretch or compression is going to get decreased by mg mu over 4k so each time you're just going to take away this much from this uh, from the stretch or compression so uh, obviously after four oscillations all this uh, all the energy is just going to be lost to friction and the block is just going to stay still so this is the answer the answer is four so after four oscillations the block is going to stop so this is a really subtle point of this question because this answer can be quite misleading because it will lead you to believe that it's actually a geometric sequence but it's actually an arithmetic sequence